Ever had a Bluetooth device you wanted to control from your computer or Raspberry Pi and you just had no idea how? In this video I will teach you how to reverse engineer Bluetooth devices and control them from a Raspberry Pi, your computer or home assistant. Let's get started. If you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I'm on a quest to automate as much of my office and studio as possible. And I almost finished automating everything here except for that video light, which would be actually perfect to use for Zoom calls or interviews or even those YouTube videos. But unfortunately, I have to change it manually every time both the brightness and turning it on and off. And I think this is time to actually change it. The easiest way to reverse engineer a protocol of a device like that is to capture the communication between the mobile application the device has and the device itself. And that's exactly what we will be doing in that video. We will use the Android HCI Snoop log, which is a log that Android keeps of all the communication between the Android device and Bluetooth devices, and a tool called Wireshark that will help us read that log and analyze it in order to understand how do the comments that the application sends to the light look like. And in the next video, we will convert that script or that protocol we, we just reversed into a home assistant automation and use it in scenes and automations. The first step, we need to install ADB. ADB stands for Android Debug Bridge, and that is the tool that we will use to communicate with our phone to get the logs out of there. The second thing we need is Wireshark that will help us read and analyze those logs. And the third thing we will use is a Raspberry Pi from which we'll actually try to control that lamp. First, we need to enable the developer mode. We go to the settings, about, and tap seven times on the build version, or in this case, MIUI version, if it's a custom skin. Next, we disable Bluetooth in order to enable it again once we enable the log. Go to developer options, find HCI Snoop log and enable it. Afterwards, enable Bluetooth again. Now we need to record some actions inside the application itself. So let's open the application and let's start sending all kinds of Bluetooth commands. Make sure you send all the commands you will want to support in your script or integration. The more commands you send, the easier it is gonna be to reverse engineer the protocol itself because we will be able to start seeing all kinds of patterns. Once you finish sending all the commands you want to reverse engineer, we need to create a bug report, basically a bundle of all the logs Android have saved. And to do that, we tap the CPU in the specs screen four times. It might take a few minutes until the bug report will actually be created, so be patient. Once the bug report was created, we can disable the HCI log, we don't need it anymore, and go to the computer to copy the bug report. The easiest way to connect is with the wireless debugging, the way I show right now. Once we generated the bug report and we recorded the log of the application talking to device, we need to download it. But in order to download it, we need to have a tool that can download bug reports from and the Android device to your computer. We just go to uh, developer.android.com, click on Android Studio. We don't have to download all of the Android Studio because it's 900 megabytes and it includes a lot of things we don't need. So you can go to what's new, SDK platform tools, and then just download that from here. And that includes uh, specifically ADB, the Android Debug Bridge. While that downloads, we can also go to wireshark.org and download from here uh, Wireshark, which is gonna be the tool we'll actually use to analyze the packets. And then in order to write our test code, we'll use Visual Studio Code with a remote connection to Raspberry Pi to run 
called Thermal Computer on the Raspberry Pi because it's much easier to use the Raspberry Pi's Bluetooth adapter to uh, connect to the device. And anyway, the code we're going to be writing in the end for Home Assistant is going to be running on Raspberry Pi. Once we are in the platform tools, you basically run ADB Perl with the IP of the device, as you saw in the wireless debugging screen, and the Perl code that appears there uh, as well. And now if I run ADB devices, I see my the cell phone being connected here. So let's do, next we do ADB bug report. And the computer is downloading the bug report from the phone, including all the generated logs. We can unzip it. Inside that folder, you go to fs data misc bluetooth logs and here you find the file called bts snoop underscore hci and that is basically the log of all all the requests and all the calls that happened on the bluetooth protocol inside the android device while communicating with the device the protocol we're interested in is bt att and so we can filter by bt att first and then we'll see that the communication between the Xiaomi phone and the Texas Instrument Lite by the, we can see by the name GDB 50968. If you scroll down a little bit, we can start seeing the send write requests. And those are the actual requests that were sent from the phone to the light to control it. Once we start looking, you see this kind of pattern F0D, 0. Uh, F0D1 and this is obviously the protocol of communicating and controlling light. We see that the, in the Bluetooth attribute protocol the opcode is write request. So let's start si finding all the uh, write requests and that brings us all the write requests sent from the phone to the light. Okay so the next thing I did is basically to record each command I sent to the lamp and that way I started figuring out different patterns. This F0 did 0060C is obviously a prefix or some command because every single command I sent from the app to the lamp began with that. So something tells me those two numbers in the end are checksums. So let's take a look at that uh, that value and we can check something like this clccalc.com put input it as hex. Since we assume the last two characters are checksum so let's just take them off. In this case, it's C6 and see if any of the results here match the C6. And look at that. So C8 Maxim matches C6. Let's take another example. Let's take this value and run C8 Maxim. And we got D5. We found out that this is the checksum algorithm is C8 Maxim. That was easy enough. After we figured out the checksum at the end, 0, 1 send, turns the lamp on, 0, 0 turns it off. But wait, here we see commands with 0, 5 and not 0, 6. And after fiddling with it a little bit, it's obvious that the 0, 5 commands are the sync ones we've been looking for. And so if you send F0, D, 1, 0, 5, uh, we set the lamp to specific intensity. After that, the 380C01 is obviously the channel to set. F0D10501 is the command. 15 is the intensity. 380C01 is the channel. And then C6 is the checksum. And so if we send different numbers instead of the 15 here, we actually set the lamp to different intensity. And with the 0, 0 and 1, 1, uh, we can control, like, turn the lamp on and off. So let's jump into VS Code and quickly write a uh, script that can execute that. SSH to the Raspberry Pi. In order to connect to the lamp and find all the attributes we can write to, we use a tool called GUT2. And 
Valentine into active mode, we pass minus A. Now, we already found in Wireshark the ID of the device. And so, let's copy that. The UID we need is 0xfec7. We can deduct that this is the UID we need. And so, we know the device address and the UUID. And so we can write a small script that will turn on the light and connect to the UUID we just got and the address we just found out, calculate the CLC and send the command to the lamp. We install the models. And the script and voila the light has turned off let's say 30 here and the script again and the light turns on that's it now we can control that light with a python script running on our raspberry pi the next step is to convert that script into a home assistant integration but we'll keep that for the next video Speaking of the next video, be sure to subscribe so you won't miss it. And if you enjoyed watching that video as much as I enjoyed making it, please click the like button so the YouTube algorithm will know to recommend that video to other people as well. That's it and see you in the next one.